Okay, now each of these problems it's asking us to find the limit, but this time it's not asking us to solve it by using the limit properties. So because of that, that means I can just plug the number directly in and get the answer. So what is, what is it here that we're doing? We're trying to find what y value is this approaching as x is approaching 2. So therefore, if you, if you plug the, the number in, that's going to tell you on this function where the, what the y value is, that particular x value. So if I put 2 in here, I'm not going to be dividing by 0 at all. So because of that, I can just put the number in directly. I put it in for all the x's, top and bottom. And when I do that, since I'm not dividing by 0, I can go ahead and get the answer. These 2's are going to cancel. I get a 12 on top, 12 divided by 4, and it gives us 3. So 3 would be the answer to the first one. As x approaches 2, the y value is going to approach 3. Let's take a look at this one. Now this one here, if I put negative 3 into the bottom, negative 3 squared, that negative is going to go away, and I get 9 minus 9, that's going to give me a 0. So by putting that in, I'm going to get something that's undefined. Now before I conclude that the whole limit's going to be undefined, I need to first use some algebraic manipulation to see if I can cancel something and be able to get an exact answer. So you always want to try some procedures on these first before you, instead of just including automatically that doesn't exist. We have to try some things first. One thing that we need to do whenever we have some polynomials like this, we need to factor this. So we're going to do x plus 3 and x plus 3 and x minus 3 on the bottom. And then a lot of times in these problems where you can factor, you'll be able to get something to cancel out here. So in this case, I can cancel out the x plus 3's. Now technically there's x plus 3 times a 1, so there's still a 1 there on top. So when I rewrite this, I have a limit as x approaches negative 3 of 1 over x minus 3. So now, because I have this, if I put negative 3 in here directly, I'm no longer going to get division by 0 error happening. So this is what I want to do in order to solve my answer. What I do now is I'll just simply put in negative 3 in for x and that's going to give me negative 1 6. So negative 1 6 would be the answer. So again, you don't want to give up too soon. If you just gave up and said that the answer is undefined, that wouldn't be correct because you need to use these algebra steps here. So again, factoring we did first, cancel out that. We rewrote it as this. Then we plug the negative 3 in, we got that answer. And so again, this one does come out to be an exact answer, negative 1 6. Okay, here's one more that we're going to do. We're dividing two polynomials. Again, when you have this kind of problem, try the number in here first. So we're going to put a 4 in there for x. If you're getting division by 0, that means you probably have to do some kind of factoring, some kind of manipulation to get it to work out. So if I put 4 in here, I get 16 minus 8 minus 8. That does give us a 0 on the bottom, so we do need to do some manipulation with this one. Now if you put the 4 in there, and we would, we would not have gotten a 0, you don't even have to factor these. You can actually just plug the number in top and bottom as is, work it out, and that would give you the answer. So the only time you have to worry about factoring and canceling is when you get something that's undefined. If you're dividing by a zero, that's when you have to do that. So we know that this is a situation where we do need to factor because the four will make that bottom one a zero. Okay, so what we'll do is we're gonna factor the top and bottom separately and hopefully we can cancel something out so that when we plug the 4 in it won't be undefined anymore. For the top one we're going to do 1 and 4. Two numbers that multiply to make 4 and add to negative 5. We've got to use two negatives there, negative 1 and negative 4. On the bottom, x and x, 8, uh, we can use a 2 and a 4. And since the middle term has to be negative, the larger one here is going to get a negative. So we're going to do plus 2 and a minus 4. What we notice now is we can cancel out the x minus 4s. So now it leaves us with something that we are able to plug the number in to. We get x minus 1 over x plus 2 left in the bottom. So what, because we have this, we're now able to plug in the 4 into the top and bottom. 4 minus 1. 4 plus 2, and we're going to get 3 over 6, or 1 half is the answer. So this one we were able to work out more. So a question you might be wondering is, well, what if we cancel something out and it's still going to be undefined? 
We're going to talk about that in a later session. That's talking about limits going to infinity or negative infinity. Sometimes, no matter what, even if you cancel something out, sometimes you're still left with something where you get a zero on the bottom, and we'll deal with that in a later session. The ones in this session primarily will be ones where you'll be able to cancel something out and it'll give you a number as a result. So this one, we do get an exact value for the limit. As, you approach, as the x value approaches four, with this one here, the y value is gonna be approaching one half.